Welcome back to Elder Scrolls Online. Season's greetings to everyone. I hope that the season will find you in good spirits and in good health. Tonight I'm going to talk about uh, some really interesting things that were said today in a letter from the game directors. But before we go through that, I want to remind everybody that we are going to have the New Life Festival starting this Thursday, December 15th at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until January 3rd, 2003. So this is a repeating festival that we have every year. There's going to be event tickets and every first, well, let's put it this way. The first quest that you do for the event will get you three event tickets. You can earn up to 60 event tickets by the end of this event. And remember, you can only keep 12 event tickets at any one time. All of the things that we need for all of the, all of the prizes that we needed for the event all year long will be available. And we will get our final, our final piece for the skills of Akatosh today. Or this week. We're also going to get a new motif style, which might look good with the hat that I've got on in the other screen. So just remember that is going to be happening starting this Thursday, so don't miss out on your event tickets. All right, so this is the studio director's letter for 2022 retrospective and the future of ESO. Now, this was written by Matt Ferrar. I'm sorry if I don't say his name right. Um, so he says, as we end the as we approach the end of 2022, it is once again time to share some thoughts on where ESO is and to look ahead at what is in store for the game in the new year. So he talks about the chapter that we had for this year long chapter and all the success that he's had and that we gained, what, a million new players this year, which is great. And they also brought the Spanish and simplified Chinese translations to the game. So that's brought in more people. They returned to live person events with um, ESO Tavern in Germany this August. And they are glad to be out traveling again. Then he discusses the issues with update 36 which launched just this last november it introduced far too many bugs and issues and even as i write this this is quote we are still chasing down issues with blocking combat and he is just as concerned about this as everybody else and they're going to be making some process changes within the development team to ensure that things like this happen far more rarely. He says something kind of concerning about with the aging code base, which is 26 million lines of code, it is difficult to be 100% efficient. But we can be far, far better and we know it. All right, so I can attest that I spent a week on a bridge with update 36 because I couldn't move without crashing. And that is the first time really since this game ever began that I've experienced anything like it. So I'm glad that he's addressing this issue. Now, this is what we get to look forward to 2023. So he's explaining that there are two types of content that they make it for ESO handcrafted such as quest stories and things you do one time per character 
and systems, which are activities that are generally repeatable, such as PvP, dungeons, trials, housing, daily crafts, writs, crafting writs, and so forth. And we've always had a mix of the two types of content, but in terms of the dev team hours, the majority of the time developing the game has been weighted down towards questing content. The big news for 2023 is that, based in significant part on player feedback, we are now at a point where we are reassessing the balance of handcrafted, one-and-done storytelling content versus repeatable game activities. Okay. ESO is a massive game with a huge number of zones, quests, and systems. We've created 40 or so hours of hand-built content every year since 2015, as well as a myriad of dungeons and new systems like One Tamriel, Thieving, Assassinations, Companions, Tales of Tributes, Antiquities, Crafting, Writs, Housing, Graphical Character Customization, Solo Group and Group Arenas, PvP Battlegrounds, and much more. And now that we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of questing content, enough for four or five regular RPGs, we are hearing from our new players that the sheer number of zones and stories and characters is intimidating. And on the other hand, our veteran players consistently tell us that they would like more content that isn't played through just once. They would like more content they can enjoy for years. Content that utilizes our already existing zones to add new things to do, and most importantly, introduces some new gameplay. All right, we're building up to the big reveal, sort of. Moving forward to 2023. Given the above, 2023 will see us moving away from the year-long adventure 12-month storylines that we have featured since 2019's Season of the Dragon. I think these have run their course and, free us, and this frees us up to do some new and interesting content that we've been wanting to do for years now and lets us return to expansive story arcs that unfold over multiple chapters. This year-long strategy was a huge success and raised the profile of ESO, but now, after four straight years, we're finding more and more that this cadence limits what we can do. So, below is the 2023 content cadence. Please note that the first half of the year remains essentially unchanged, but the second half of the year now has an update devoted to addressing issues, quality of life improvements, and an update devoted to a large new tentpole system. I have no idea what he means by a tentpole pole system. I have no idea. So in quarter one, we'll get a dungeon DLC. In quarter two, we'll get a full featured chapter in June. The 2023 ESO chapter will be a complete story. You will be able to play all the way through it without a storyline that is broken out and reserved for later in the year. We will return to larger, better, and more detailed chapters by doing this. We are really excited about the next year's chapter. For details, you'll have to wait for our global reveal event in January. But one hint, this will be part of one of a multi-year story arc and will contain one of the most requested new features. I have no idea what that would be. My wish is for horses that can swim, but you know, I think that's pretty low on the feature list for them. Q3 will focus on quality of life improvements and bug fixes. And Q4, rather than the usual zone DLC, they will be featuring a new system. We are working on the concept and design for this now. We'll give more details during our global reveal event early next year. Looking back at ESO's evolution since 2014, you can see that we often shake things up. That, that is an understatement. Every year, every update is there's always going to be at least one huge revamp of combat and set items and balancing, quote unquote, balancing, all that stuff. So yes, they do shake it up quite a bit. They keep us on our toes. Um, so there, then they go into um, the hardware and server updates. 
they're expecting to they said they're in the home stretch of upgrading and replacing all ESO data center hardware, which of course has been significantly delayed by ongoing global slowdown of sourcing computer hardware. Once complete, ESO servers and infrastructure will be much more reliable as we saw from the one realm that has been upgraded so far, PC North America. There will be some performance improvements as well. Almost all of the hardware should be delivered and in place by December, and then we'll need a month or two to install and test everything before we shift over to the new hardware. Please note that we will be prioritizing all three realms in the EU data center first, and then we will return to the NA data center to finish moving Xbox and PlayStation realms there. We are as frustrated as you that this has taken so long, but it is happening and will be done and ready for all players probably in late February or March of 2023. Our multi-threading work continues as we announced a month or so back, just to remind everyone, this is the initiative that will result in better overall server performance. As we already announced, we will be phasing these changes in over the course of 2023, starting with the chapter in Order 2, and we'll keep everyone updated in the patch notes going forward. And then they are going to have an in-person gathering this spring somewhere in the United States. Stay tuned for details. And that's pretty much what they have going on. So I think those are some interesting developments for the game. I can't imagine what the new system will be, but I have heard that, you know, that the veterans like myself want harder content on overland adventures and it sounds like they want to bring some new system to the old zones so that we can go back and enjoy them again. I think that's going to be part of it, at least. Anyway, I'm not quite sure what to think about the chapter DLC but, situation, but I am one of the ones who does gobble up all of the quests that they put out, and I've always liked the quests, so I hope that it will keep me interested. That's all I can say. Anyway, for me, things are going slowly but surely towards getting into a new home we're putting down new floors and everything right now as we speak um and so i'm thinking i'm going to be moving probably sometime in january starting in january february over that course of period of time so things are still pretty hectic for me content might still be kind of iffy and off and on and I apologize for that, but I have a lot of work to do to get the new place set up. And once I am set up, I'll have a separate studio that I can work from. And I can really get back to work on creating content. So anyway, have a good holiday and happy new year. I will talk to you again later. Goodbye. Thank you for watching. Please take a moment to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Until next time, goodbye.